on table manners. Betty, our hostess, is having a few of her friends to her home for a birthday party. She has been to any number of little parties like this, but this is the first time she has given a party all by herself. Like everyone else, she thinks that her etiquette is perhaps not perfect, but good enough so that there are no glaring errors. She is proud of her table arrangement and thinks she deserves a word of congratulation. But the housekeeper must tell Betty she has noticed a few errors. A napkin is out of place. The butter knife belongs on the butter dish, not next to the meat knife. And a water glass. Small matters, but they are important when they show whether or not your habits of etiquette are correct. See if you notice right away when someone is incorrect or is definitely correct. Betty's confidence is shaken a bit and she has doubts of her correctness. Should she have preceded her guests into the room? Is she directing them to their places properly? Should Betty have used place cards? The young man who is trying too late to assist Betty with her chair is Bob. It is his birthday that is being celebrated and his host. He seems to feel at ease and just act as she always does. Notice now what of his way of opening his napkin and put her in his belt. Could that be all right? Bernie and Helen seem quite certain of the way they open their napkins and place them in a half fold in their laps. They seem to be really at ease. But then everyone is more at ease now that the party has really started. The main thing is that they should enjoy each other's company. Betty and Bob aren't worrying about their mistakes for a moment, but in the back of their minds they realize they will have to pay more attention to their manners. They know that the object of correct etiquette is not to make life formal and dull, but to make it fully enjoyable. There are reasons for each act of etiquette, as in a man's assisting a lady with her chair, or the order with which people are... Bob is hungry, and the soup looks good. He is using his company manners, but as we see, he is doing at least three things wrong. Now that the soup is served, Betty sees that the crackers are passed. Floyd passes the crackers to Dorothea before he helps himself. Should he have helped himself first or not? Bob is eating before the others. What about that? Apparently the guests are waiting for Betty to pick up her spoon before they begin. Dorothy too starts, and they all in But naturally the guests give no indication of having noticed any error on Bob's part, since that in itself would be impolite. As the relish dish is passed, Bob takes a handful and puts them on his service plate and back he goes to his soup in the same old way. Then Bob notices that the others have placed their relish differently and changes them from one plate to the other, knowing there is a reason, but what is it? But having made the change, Bob is glad to see Betty has noticed that he corrected himself. All is well again with the party. No one's enjoyment is being interrupted with any problems for the moment. Betty now is running into some problems of her own, things that she hadn't thought of until now. That elbow on the table isn't one of her problems because she isn't even aware of it, but she is aware of the olive as a problem. Is there a correct way of eating an olive? Shouldn't you just pop it into your mouth and eat it? But then, how do you take out the pit? With your fingers? And when you have the pit, where should you place it? Floyd seems to have confidence in his way, but also too many fingers. Betty thinks she might try Floyd's way. Betty hopes that she doesn't look as awkward as she feels. Now our hostess feels better about the olives, but right away, she sees something else. Dorothy is breaking her celery before taking a bite has always been just celery. You ate it in whatever lengths you found it. Is it easier to handle in shorter lengths? And does it look like a smaller bite when you dip it in the salt and then bite off a portion? Bernie and Helen don't seem to be concerned with any problems. Bernie eats a radish and simply enjoys it, and he seems certain of himself. Helen is even tipping her soup plate for a last sup. Can that be correct? Certainly her manners aren't interfering with her enjoyment of the party. 
As host, Bob is expected to serve the meat course. At home, his father does the serving. It looked perfectly simple, and it is. But if you were in Bob's place, would you know positively what to do? Which serving implement should he use? Should he just go ahead as best he can? Dorothy is looking away so as not to notice. Bob still isn't sure of what to do, but he can't hesitate forever. That amount seems too much. A lady is not flattered by being offered a portion the size that might appeal to a hungry lumberjack. Betty is worried for Bob, but after all, he is trying. Everyone learns by experience even when mistakes are made, and one isn't at all sure of anything that he is doing. Bob wonders if the portions he is serving are now too small. Should he give a large portion to the men and small ones to the, to the ladies? Or should he serve about this amount and let the guests return their plates if they wish a second helping? Now Betty is about to serve the salad. Some new questions are arising. Can she use the implements for serving the salad correctly? And what size should the portions of salad be? Is she offering too little? Is she getting a proper assortment? As Betty passes the plate, should she say for whom the plate is intended? Bernie and Helen act as though everything were going smoothly with them. And so really it is. In spite of Betty's worries, there are no mishaps. Floyd and Dorothy are enjoying themselves. Bob, you notice, is not starting first this time. He waits with the others for Betty to start. Here is the kind of fun that they all thought of when the party was planned, of having a good meal together and plainly enjoying one another's company. The errors that have been made haven't taken the fun out of the party, and we must remember to give them credit for all the things that have been done correctly. For every mistake made, a dozen things have been done correctly. Bob is feeling more confident of himself. He seems to remember that it is correct to use his knife for cutting lettuce or tomato if they are served in pieces that are too big for a proper bite. What do you think? Is he wrong or is he right? But the person with confidence isn't necessarily the person who is correct. Up until this minute, Betty has been confident that a person should butter his vegetables with his knife. But now that Betty sees Floyd buttering his with his fork, she isn't certain. She wishes she did know definitely. It seems safer to follow Floyd's example. If he is correct, then she will be too. Bob is swinging from one extreme to another. One minute he is uneasy, the next overconfident. Now he is forgetting even his company manners and is acting as he usually does in telling one of his favorite stories. Dorothy and Floyd give him their attention when he is looking at them, but at the same time they manage to continue eating while their food is warm. Bob isn't letting the story interfere with his eating either. So let's try counting the number of obvious blunders. The waving of his knife and fork about. Talking with food in his mouth. Monopolizing the conversation. But it is an exciting story. It's about a trip up in the mountains, and then... Uh-oh. This isn't the kind of an ending to the story that Bob had in mind. But it is quicker, and maybe better. At least it stopped Bob from making any more mistakes. Betty, too, has discovered that she had forgotten a couple of items of behavior. She is thinking that perhaps she and Bob both need to be embarrassed a bit to make them admit that their manners aren't as good as they should be. Bob may be thinking the same thing because he certainly looks as if he has decided to make a lot of changes. The others, of course, say nothing. Betty decides that the first thing for her to do is to regain her poise. Just act as though no errors had been made. But she will be more observing of her own manners and those of others, too. Betty feels safe in her way of eating a roll and jelly. Is there anything in what Bernie and Helen are doing that would get your attention right away? Was there anything in the way he helped himself to more jelly? How about the way he holds his knife and fork? Or the way he cuts his meat? 
and takes it to his mouth with his left hand. When you are eating meat, do you take the meat to your mouth with a fork in your right hand or your left? Is there a question of correctness here? Helen is also using her left hand. Betty holds the fork in her left hand while cutting the meat and then passes the fork to her right hand for placing it in her mouth. This is zigzag eating. She has noticed that the British and continental people usually use their left hands. But now that she is beginning to take her manner seriously, she wonders if there is a matter of correctness involved or whether both ways are equally correct. One way American, the other European. Betty wishes she were as certain of that point as she is of how her knife should be placed. Bob has never heard of zigzag or continental ways of eating meat, but he is on the watch out for such things now. And as soon as he notices what Betty is doing, he is ready to follow her example, whether she is right or wrong. He uses his left hand all right, even if he does take an oversized bite. Bob congratulates himself on trying a new way. He and Betty have a lot to learn. At least there are no further mishaps as the meat course is finished and the table cleared for dessert. Bob is happy now and is proud of himself. Formal parties like this are really enjoyable when one isn't afraid of doing the wrong thing. Bob has reached the point where he feels that since his intentions are good and he is watching himself, that all is well. If you just try to figure out what is the reason for each rule of etiquette, you find that the rules are sensible. After all, correct manners are simply the way one person shows his consideration for another. In other words, Proper manners are your way of showing common politeness. As far as Bob is concerned, this is the best birthday he has ever had. And to top it off, a big birthday cake that Betty had made for him. He really appreciates this. For the cake is a symbol, like the whole dinner, of friendship. A very delicious symbol of the regard that Betty and her friends hold for Bob, particularly Betty. The lighting of the birthday cake with candles is an old custom, and so is the blowing out of the candles. But do you suppose the placing of the candles at the side is a modern touch of avoiding possible germs being blown on the cake? Serving the meat course upset Bob. Apparently serving the cake has its difficulties too. Our hostess isn't certain that she should be helping Bob. She worried about leaving the table to bring in the cake in the first place. Betty wondered if the serving should be left to the housekeeper. What would you say? There is no denying that Bob needs help. He is having trouble with the serving implements again. Do you think he might be able to figure out from the shape and the size of the blades which to use? Cutting and serving your own birthday cake would seem to be a pleasure. But could you actually do this any more gracefully than Bob is? Betty's help may not be as great as she thinks. What of her reaching in front of Bob and about her placing the dessert forks? Are these correct? Bob accompanies Betty to her place, assisting her with her chair before resuming his serving. He is at least trying to change his habits. And you notice, he forgot his napkin and sat on it. He is serving smoothly now and is not distracting his friends with his difficulties. They are free again to chat as they wish. And once again, the party is fun. Bob and Betty met more problems than they expected. As we are seeing, people like Betty and Bob, who want to entertain their friends and have good times together, forget that poor manners can really interfere with the fun of the party. There is no fun in being worried, unsure, or ill at ease. It is much simpler in the long run to face your problems, find out what the correct answer is, and then when you act in a way that you know for certain is correct, your mind is perfectly free. Of course, all this isn't accomplished just by wishing. There are still habits that have first to be detected and then broken. This is hard. Then new habits have to be formed. But a little study of etiquette will help greatly and lessons are all practical. Once you have formed correct habits in your manners, you will find that they give you a sense of confidence. That is a reward in itself. Our party is ending. 
but let's hope that for you it is, in another sense, just a beginning. As you think of Betty and Bob and their problems, compare your own manners. Don't forget that it is by their manners that polite people the world around show their consideration for one another. A dinner party is just one way of enjoying company of your friends. A good meal, good company, real enjoyment, that's what a dinner party is for.